Uh, I had just returned from my postgraduate studies and I was still in electrical engineering. So computer science or computing was quite new to us. Quite fortunately, we um, had the opportunity to use the IEEE Computer Society model curriculum that they had just released in 1983. So that gave us the, uh, the framework that we used to develop the uh, computer science curriculum at the University of Moscow. In terms of establishing the department, I think the main challenge was uh, uh, recruiting enough staff. Uh, we didn't have any computer science graduates to, uh, to recruit, so we were looking for electronic and telecommunication engineering graduates. And also, I was quite fortunate to have uh, the JOC vol volunteers from Japanese government and also the VSO volunteers from uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, so we were able to manage uh, to, to fill some of the staff positions uh, using them. Um, in 1987, we were very fortunate to have a Japanese uh, International Cooperation Agency grant uh, in order to set up laboratories and I was able to set up all the necessary laboratories using those funds. Oh, that's a very interesting question because in 1983 when we thought about networks, we did not really think of the internet. We were just thinking of building computer networks and data communication services to provide uh, academic and uh, research computing facilities. Um, in 1984, I visited some universities in the region uh, to understand their computer science and engineering curricula. And uh, that's the first time I got to know about academic and research networking in those universities. So um, my first attempt was to develop the uh, capacity within the department, in both in terms of resources and Staff. And then in 1989, um, I was spending my sabbatical at the University of Kiel, where I got to uh, work with uh, the Janet, the UK academic network. And that gave me the um, impetus to, uh, to articulate my vision for a countrywide network for academic and research networking. It is only in 1992, when the internet became known worldwide, um, I pre formulated the uh, proposal and we started implementing the internet. The concept of LEARN actually was uh, setting up a countrywide network for academic and research networking. When I proposed in 19, 1989, X25 was still a dominant uh, technology in the world and because of the links that we had uh, with the UK, uh, I was proposing to set up a similar uh, infrastructure in Sri Lanka. But um, between 1989 and 1992, many things happened and uh, we were then able to incorporate ideas into the Learn Internet. And finally, what we implemented was the first IP WAN in Sri Lanka as Learn. We had to face two challenges. The first one was financial. Being a developing country, uh, it was not easy to find funds. Secondly, we ha also had some technical uh, challenges to, uh, to conquer. Um, the financial situation uh, was helped by uh, assistance given by the Computer and Information Technology Council of Sri Lanka, uh, the University Grants Commission, and also Lanka Academic Network, a not-for-profit uh, organization set up uh, to support ICT endeavors in Sri Lanka. The technical challenges uh, were mainly uh, encountered in, in terms of setting up the, uh, the uh, wireless links connecting the University of Moreto to the University of Columbia and the Open University and configuring the routers and various other uh, issues uh, because at the time the Department of Communication did not have any expertise within themselves so we were setting up the, uh, the test bed for both the university system as well as the, the telecommunication industry to, uh, to uh, understand. Um, in 1993, uh, I was fortunate enough with several others from the university to attend the uh, developing country workshops organized and funded by the Internet Society. And uh, we met people like Randy Bush and uh, George Sadowski uh, who were very helpful later on in uh, our attempt to set up the network. Uh, to start with, uh, I, I think uh, I should mention the 
staff at University of Kiel, where I was spending uh, my sabbatical, uh, who uh, uh, helped me to, to work with their system, uh, understanding X25 switches and the, how to configure things um, at that time. But uh, on my return, when we started really implementing Learn, I should mention some of my own colleagues who were uh, my students uh, beforehand, uh, Clement Adams, uh, Vihan Das, uh, Lalit Kamage, um, and a few others who were helping us to run the email system, um, uh, Sanjeev Virvarna, Atul Herat, uh, Nimal Ratnayaka, they were graduate students in the US at that time. They all helped us to set it up. Again, it's a very interesting question because before we started LearnMail, the first IP-based email system, uh, previously there had been several attempts. The RTC Clark Center started the Mallard Mailbox system. Uh, several people were using CompuServe and uh, other uh, private uh, email systems. But there was nothing really connecting uh, networks to the internet for exchange of internet email. So when we uh, thought of the Learn Network as the uh, basis or the framework for academic and research networks in Sri Lanka uh, and also to uh, be able to attract funding to implement this. The first service I wanted to implement was the email because I knew that people will then uh, get to know about it and they will uh, appreciate the services that could be offered using a network. So we started Learn Mail in 1990 and uh, in the beginning of course uh, it was expensive to run uh, IDD connection from the US to, the, to Sri Lanka. Um, so we were dialing uh, roughly about three times a week, but then within a few months we were uh, connecting three times a day until in 1995 finally we made the permanent connection. Uh, more than sacrifices, I think uh, they were solving problems. Uh, the very first was to, uh, uh, to find enough money to procure three uh, uh, digital circuits. And at the time, uh, the telecommunication department uh, uh, was not able to provide any digital circuits uh, la using landlines. So we had to procure equipment to run uh, three uh, wireless links uh, and the speed was 64 kilobits per second at that time. And um, to, of course, fund that, we needed money. And very fortunately, the University Grants Commission gave us three million rupees to procure those lines. Uh, and we also procured the, uh, the uh, routers, IP routers, uh, with that money. Uh, I remember the, uh, the meetings, several meetings we had at the UGC, uh, where, where my colleagues, my, my contemporaries were uh, asking funds more for uh, laboratories and uh, uh, other uh, basic facilities rather than uh, setting up a wide area network. Uh, I'm sure at that time uh, it was not uh, easy for them to understand the benefits that this type of a network could bring uh, to uh, their community. Also, you've got to remember that this was the time that uh, policymakers, politicians, they were not carrying smartphones, they didn't have Facebook accounts, they didn't uh, uh, have tweeting uh, to their constituents. So for them also it was difficult. So convincing them to support this uh, proposal uh, and, and the project was the, the most uh, difficult thing. There are two, really two questions I, I will answer. The first one is, in terms of the benefit, um, what I saw was the uh, potential that our students and staff uh, will have if you have access to information. And uh, you've got to remember that Sri Lanka being a developing country, uh, it is hard to get um, uh, access to books, uh, publications and information. So my first um, idea was to provide this network access so that staff and students could benefit from that. Uh, secondly, from 1992 onwards, um, I think it has been a, a journey which has just continued to, to, to grow. Um, I left uh, the university in 1998 and after that, of course, there were several people who have contributed, Prof. Gyan Daesh, Prof. Nimal Ratnayaka, and, uh, and, and continued to develop, learn to the current state. So we are, I'm sure, uh, quite on par with the rest of the world uh, in terms of uh, the services that we provide to our students and staff. Uh, 
in any case, every country will be looking for more bandwidth, more resources, more capacity, and Sri Lanka is no exception. In keeping with the times, I think the uh, academics, university uh, lecturers, staff, students, uh, and others working in the research institutes, they have been able to produce more and more research output, uh, which could have been uh, useful for the, uh, the, the general community in the country. So in that sense, I think we have achieved uh, our objective. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there's always another side of the coin and uh, there are things that could be um, uh, anti-social, uh, not really contributing to the betterment of the community. So um, that side of the, the story is always there. As I said, um, be, there will always be people who will want to uh, destroy uh, and, and uh, uh, somehow uh, damage uh, the delivery of uh, the services for the common good of mankind. So I've always believed that whatever we do should be for the common good. And um, what I see is that uh, the small percentage of people will continue to uh, do things which will uh, affect the way we can deliver the services to uh, the ordinary uh, humankind. Uh, for an example, identity theft is a, is a major issue these days. Uh, credit card theft and uh, um, the, the, uh, the use of the internet to commit crime. Uh, some of the crimes which have been committed uh, for several centuries, you have now found a better way to, or an easier way to commit. So that will continue. So uh, the community is uh, quite aware of this and the efforts will be to make the internet a better place. Things come and go. Uh, yes, we had grid computing, uh, what I call the poor man supercomputer, and uh, then came the cloud computing, which is the hype these days. Uh, what I see as the future of the internet is basically the deployment of the new generation IPv6 which will allow us to have a um, massive amount of IP addresses, which could be used to connect uh, several billion devices. The prediction is that uh, by 2020, we will have 200 billion devices connected onto the internet. And uh, that will mean something like $25 billion industry. So when that happens, there'll be an enormous growth of uh, services, uh, which will be used by uh, ordinary people. But that also means that these devices will start talking to each other, exchanging information, including uh, personal information. And uh, if we do not take enough uh, care uh, so that the privacy is maintained, the access to uh, the information is properly controlled, what could happen is that this uh, vital information could fall into uh, the wrong hands. And that is the, is the major threat I, I could see. I think the, uh, the day we connected, learned permanently the internet, is the breakthrough moment. Uh, we have been working really uh, hard to get to that point, overcoming all the issues and uh, problems that we had. And with all the cooperation that we had from Sri Lanka Telecom, uh, the University, the Unified Grants Commission, the Computer and Information Technology Council of Sri Lanka, and uh, people uh, uh, from the, uh, uh, the uh, United States of America, uh, where we uh, connected to at the end, uh, that was the breakthrough moment. If you look back, there are a few uh, major uh, steps that uh, we have seen contributing to the growth, the exponential growth of the internet. The first one being having, of course, established the internet, the email. Uh, which was the killer application until 1993 uh, when Tim Berners-Lee uh, invented the World Wide Web. So today, m everything is more or less World Wide Web based and uh, that is the killer application. Uh, so it has been growing. Internet is almost like a live form. It is evolving. So I would expect uh, 
at various stages some of these killer applications to come to life and uh, that is where the, uh, the, the growth will be. So I would expect some of the Sri Lankans to contribute to this, uh, this, uh, this type of uh, uh, growing application. Um, I am qu quite happy uh, that uh, Sri Lanka um, had the fortune, good fortune of uh, connecting to the internet rather early uh, along with several other countries in the region and uh, after that people have seen the benefits and uh, they have uh, continued to, uh, to, to let it grow to the current state and I'm sure it will continue uh, in the same way for the next 25-50 uh, years. Mm -hmm.